Aries. Hello Aries, this is your June forecast for 2013 and uh, this month we're looking at a totally different specter of your scope and you're starting out here with a lot of communication coming to you this month and I'm hoping that you're going to really take the um, possibilities that the universe is going to bestow upon you because you can accomplish a whole lot this month by being busy and communicative and do whatever you need to do Get those contracts signed. Uh, some of you will be back and forth, to and fro, traveling short distance. Could be some long distance travel in here, but mainly it will be for short distance travel to network, communicate, and then bring and merge together what it's been you, what you've been working on here over these last couple of months. So when we go back here, say to, to April you set out with a mission you had a goal um, you you gathered your drive so to speak because in march you were contemplating a whole lot you're weeding out and thinking hmm don't want to do this no more i want to go for that you know and then you were weighing all your options here uh in may so now for june it, it's all about getting it up and going and i see you running with it too so it's going to be great now, already in the beginning of the month, you're going to see Venus, your, your planet of love and desire, and also those things you, you value, uh, So, which also will mean your money. It's going to move into your fourth house, okay? This is your roots, your family, you know, your self-worth down at the bottom of your core, so to speak. Some of you will be putting money into real estate this uh, month. Uh, either buying, you could be selling, great time for that. Uh, some of you might take up new leases or buy property, you know, buy uh, land somewhere. And you could probably get some really great bargains if you're looking for larger scale of ground and property. So, and uh, whatever communications or uh, signatures that you need for property or for lease, that should be coming in just in the beginning here of the month, that first uh, week, when Venus will conjoin here with Mercury. Great time to sign any kind of papers or contracts at that time. So then we're also looking at uh, your drive. Okay, Mars, their third house communication, and it's how you communicate. Some of you might find yourself a little Marsy this month, you know, and the uh, only thing you need to be uh, a little bit aware of is that you don't come across too abruptly, uh, which Mars can do, uh, but it's really great for, for driving your point and getting that out there, uh, and that can be quite so essential for you. And it's also men around you. Uh, you might see that they may be a little bit more assertive this month, as you yourself will be as well. And then we have this new moon also, third house. So what does that mean? That's exactly where you want to plant your intentions for this month, but also for the year to come. It's those seeds we've been talking about, those uh, intention seeds. They can grow humongous. And, and you don't want to scatter it all over the place. So here on the 8th is the time for you to take at least a five minute meditation. Center yourself. You know, write yourself a check, you know, and then void it, of course. But write yourself a check, what it is you want to visualize here for the end of this month. And, in fact, for the rest of the year as well. Uh, that's the right way of doing it. Others will be doing vision boards. Uh, and I know a lot of you uh, Aryans, you're creative. If you can find the time to it, I do know I see you busy all over the place right now. But this is a must because it's going to be a whole new year you know, until June of next year before you get this opportunity. And the focus is on, uh, the affirmation of it, what you should focus on is, how can I communicate clearly? How can I expand my communication? How can I get myself out there, you know, and be seen? How can I promote my website? Or how can I promote my business? Anything that needs to be 
in a PR related uh, situation or advertisements, you know, now is the time, especially because you've got Jupiter there. Jupiter is going to be moving very shortly by the end of this month into your fourth house. So you won't have the benefit of having Jupiter with you and Jupiter will expand anything you're working with. So in the business and communication field, if you need to add on, for example, your website's live chat or something like that, put that in there because then you'll have a direct communication with your clients, for example. And then we also have, uh, on this first week, you, you have a, a beautiful trine here, Mercury and Neptune, which will allow you to, um, which I say, reach for those, grasping for those ideas, uh, newness, uh, things that you might have been th uh, thinking about for a long time and didn't really get it up and going. But this same Mercury, not only is it trining Neptune, which is that great, creative mind of yours, but it's going to be able to kind of root it, bring it down uh, to planet Earth. Saturn can lock something in for you that can behoove you for months and years to come if you use and harness the energy of the third, very top of the month, excellent time. And for you, all of this will be uh, also in the fourth house. So it's how you perceive yourself on the innermost core. It's your roots, family, traditions, background. What talents have you brought with you from your family? You know, you might want to start researching there uh, and looking back to see who you've inherited certain talents from. And even if you haven't displayed them yet, you know, look at your uncles, your aunts, your grand uncles and aunts and grandparents. What did they do? What, what um, profession did they have? That will tell you a little bit of your own genetic uh, DNA and what you can possibly start bringing up and out. All you need to do is just trust it. It's there. So that can be uh, quite fun to explore for you. And then we have uh, the 7th. Uh, there's several things going on on the 7th. Mark that on your calendar. Now, where uh, Mercury was with this Neptune, Venus is moving in, also training this Neptune. Creative creativity. You know, it, it, it's like Venus times 10. Those two together can really paint the dream. And the thing is, in life, nothing is impossible. You know, it might take a little energy to get there, but if you can see it, you can do it. Okay, so it's kind of one of those see it, do it things uh, right now because that same Venus is also trining Saturn that gives it body, shape, and form brings it into this third dimension to manifest its energy. So you might get the thought there the week before on the third around there, and now you can implement it. Don't wait a month, don't wait six months. That idea, that, that genius idea of yours might already be gone with wind a long time ago. So yeah, uh, already the following week, do something. I see you in some power talks there also on the 7th, so you might be reaching out to some experts that can help you implement whatever that may be. The only thing you need to look a little bit out for, if you're going to do any agreements on whatever this greater project is, make sure you read the fine print if there is a contract, because Mars right there is square Neptune, so you just want to make sure that everything's on the up and up and it doesn't get a little muddy there. Then we have the new moon on the 8th um, that we just spoke about. And the great thing about that is that it's coming in here kind of conjuncting. Also, uh, um, no it's not, I'm sorry, it's, it's squaring. <laughs> the new moon will be squaring Uranus here on the 8th. So that will kind of jar your thoughts a little bit or you might feel that you're a little bit on an overload where uh, perhaps a lot of new thoughts are coming in all at once. It's like, who turned up that channel? <laughs> you know, you got like 10 channels going on all at once. Um, so make sure you have a notepad. You can't really visit each of those ideas, you know, for a long time since you're being replaced new ones all the time. Just write them down and then come back to them in a few days. So the 11th, 12th, and 14th, yes, uh, Venus is going to have a little talk there with Pluto. Some intensity on that day, uh, for better or worse. 
um, but it could be about money issues, it could be a love issue romantically, uh, could be things that are a little bit unsquare with each other there. So you might be butting heads and needing to have a talk uh, of whatever it is you uh, like or don't like and uh, make that aware to your partner. Um, so, but just make sure that you kind of kiss and make up, you know, so it doesn't linger. That Pluto, you know, can be a little explosive. And, and but, but Venus isn't too happy, you know, it, it's squaring uh, Uranus and it's opposing Pluto. And so something there is not sitting well, it might be jarring you, you know, so get in touch, go deep, you know, feel those feelings and embrace them. And I think from what I see, it has something to do with the past, as if you're looking at a pattern or recurring pattern, and uh, where you're kind of saying, enough is enough, you know, been there, done that, I'm not doing this no more, you know, that's the internal talk, the chatter that you're having, um, and that's okay, that is good, we want to cleanse anything that we can cleanse, <laughs> always a good thing for later on. And then uh, right behind it, Mars is really speeding up, but taking some leaps of faith uh, and doing the dance with Uranus, which is going to bring some unexpected surprises. Um, it could be support coming from a person or a group, uh, wherever that falls into your house, uh, which would be uh, between the first and the third house. So uh, communication, you know, it's that network house in the third. Uh, it could also be meeting somebody who's traveling through or maybe you're going to be out traveling. Um, <clears throat> and, and we're talking about communication, how important it is this month. So that this would be a glorious day, in fact, all these three days, 17th, 19th, and the 20th, to get your message out there. If you're, you know, doing any kind of broadcasting, radio, TV, or advertisement, um, this would be the time Mars is right behind you uh, and the Sun and Jupiter is just opening up and giving the best results Jupiter will come across very charming um, very charismatic and it will come across genuine to the people you're talking to especially because this is your third house and Jupiter uh, loves to um, which I say expand the uh, scene okay the platform that you're on uh, and it can go wide and far-reaching so wrapping that up probably around there the 20th of Mercury and Venus uh, together the feedback you're already getting from whoever was working with you on this um, they're feeling also that this has gone really well if you're writing if you're doing any scripts books blogs magazine articles whatever that may be fantastic time here very inspired time at the beginning of the month and also this week here around 17th throughout the 20th and then the sun ingresses into your um, cancer sign of cancer allowing you now to kind of whew, take that deep breath okay from, from this running around uh, and to start nurturing nurturing yourself nurturing the family you know they've been sacrificing this month because you've been out and about you know, so the family is needing you, you're needing them. And Jupiter is going to follow right behind it on the 25th. So it's going to be leaving your, your third house for communication and travel, which it's been there this whole last year from uh, summer of 2012. So, you know, that has been an important time for you where I see how your mind has been studying a lot. It's been far reaching into uh, the net, the webs, you know the foreign nation countries and people so it's like I feel you're going to be harvesting in a way that you know more than anybody exactly how much you deserve to get what's coming to you now so Jupiter is going to be here in this area of property home residence the family uh, parents taking care of them if they need you um, for this whole year until summer of 2014 going to be a delightful time there this last week of June and uh, you'll also see that Venus here will be leaving um, uh, your third house also entering the party of the fourth house where you can now just have a great family reunion which I think a lot of you will here around the 27th thereafter 
Now, I want to just conclude uh, here your June's forecast with a couple of things. Uh, we have Mercury turning retrograde there on the 26th of June, and it will be there for three and a half weeks. And we all know by now what Mercury retrograde means. Don't sign any commitments, papers, documents, or anything, especially not related to home, property, and land investments since it's in the fourth house. Um, if you can wait, then that would be good. Um, until we get, I'd say, three weeks into uh, July there. If you can wait the whole month of July, just take a total vacation from it, then you'll be even better footed. We have that full moon on the 23rd, right before a retrograde. And this moon here is going to be conjunct uh, Pluto in Capricorn. So the first few hours prior to, there's the full moon. Then it's going to be moving over that Pluto. So you're going to get some kind of a really, really juicy full moon uh, emotions here at the end of June. It is in the sign of Capricorn, really asking you what is important to you. You know, Capricorn is so goal-oriented. So you might feel a certain drive to embody some of those Capricornian feelings and transform it deeply. That's Pluto. Now, Pluto never touches anything lightly. So it's want to go in there and grip something that can really elevate you that you're going to see, you know, here in July. We just, you know, concluded three eclipses here in this last month. Uh, so we had two solar uh, eclipses and a, a lunar eclipse there. So now this is a full moon, uh, not an eclipse, but nonetheless, it is going to be uh, powerful due to that uh, Pluto. And we have a little kite formation taking place there, uh, which, just imagine a kite, okay? So you've got some planets here on top, which is Sun, Jupiter. On the sides of it, you're going to have Neptune and Saturn supporting it in a very good uh, aspect. Down at the bottom, you know, where all those little ribbons hang, that's where that uh, full moon Pluto is going to sit. So for me, um, normally I don't go into too much details of it, but I kind of like to uh, show you a little bit what that can do because that full moon is going to be opposing up here Sun and Jupiter. Sun and Jupiter wants to expand and the moon is sitting here as an anchor, okay, down at the bottom here and it's asking what do I want to rid myself of or what do I want to transform? What do I bring into new life so this Jupiter and Sun can really, you know, have a good opening? And it's supported, see? On both ends, six tiles on the top, trines at the bottom. Both of those are significant good transits. They are grounding it, anchoring it in, anchoring the dream. Saturn is karma. So you know what? It's a little bit of a special full moon we're having here in June. So I wish you the best. You know, listen to your... Uh, Sun, uh, to your moon sign and your rising sign Aries and uh, listen to your partner too. It will just give a little bit more of that fuller information of what's going on with you. Bye for now.